Now that we've completed the first step in creating our painterly effect by blurring our image, we can now crunch the blurred image. We can do this by adding a few simple controls that will add high contrast. So first, let's take our exposure compensation and let's set it back to zero. And we're gonna get our bright image back as a result of adding all of our offset base colors together. Now let's go back into our material. Let's make a little more room after the final add that's adding together all of our base colors to blur the render. And let's focus on the boy's shirt because there's quite a bit of granular detail that's in the base color across the whole shirt. And let's look at the power of what adding high contrast to this blurred image can do. So if I add a floor node, and the way I do that is I right click and I just type floor under math, I can see I have a very simple material expression. And what the floor material expression does is it'll take RGB values into the input and it will round each red, green, blue value down to the nearest integer. The result is something that looks very much like this, a highly saturated, high contrast image. So if I now take my blur amount and I begin to adjust it, I can see the immediate effect that's happening on my image, a bit of a posterization effect. So let's set the blur amount back to five. And after our floor node, let's multiply our floor by a scalar parameter. We'll call it floor multi. Let's set the default value to one. Let's plug it in and save. And now I can see that by adjusting the multiplication of the floor, I can change the colors, increase the contrast. If I decrease the amount, I can bring details back into other parts of the image we can see on the rocks. Let's set this value to 0.5 for now to darken our high contrast image just a little bit. And now after this multiply, let's add a ceiling node. Again, it's a math operation. As you might guess, based on the name, it does the opposite of what the floor node does. It's gonna take all of the RGB values that are plugged into the input, and it's gonna round them up to the nearest integer instead of rounding them down like the floor does. Now, if we take a look particularly at the detail of the light area on the sleeve against the dark area, if we plug this ceiling node into the emissive, and now we hit save, we see that we have effectively removed all of the color and are rendering a flat red for most of the sleeves on the boy. If we take these two nodes, copy and paste, plug the ceiling into this new multiply, and name our new parameter seal multi, and plug the result in and save, we can now drive how much the ceiling node affects our image as well. So let's set this to five and save. With these simple controls, we can flatten busy areas of color into broad areas of flat paint. Because the posterizing effect leaves highly saturated colors as a result, we need additional controls to affect the color. In the next module, we'll set up some simple controls to adjust the color of the render.